Okay, at long last, we are going to prove theorem 4.7. This is the theorem that says the set of all points, <clears throat> such that the distances to the fixed points, to two fixed points, have the given have a given ratio is a circle. It's called the circle of Apollonius, and this is actually the subject of many of your questions about this section. There was some some. Uh, I, and I think rightly so, there was some discussion of how, whether or not this theorem even fits in with the section. Um, and I, <clears throat> I would say that it is certainly not clear how it fits into the section until you delve into the proof of the theorem, and not just the proof as written in the book, but actually digging out all of the details that are really required uh, to prove this, um, I think the connection to the other theorems uh, becomes a lot clearer. So uh, we're going to prove this by saying, you know, suppose we have two points, A and B. Okay. And we're going to look at the line going through A and B, and we're going to have some fixed ratio, some given ratio, Okay, <clears throat> and now uh, if this r is equal to 1, this is saying that we're looking at all the points whose distance to a is equal to their distance to b. And we've seen this before. This is actually just describing the perpendicular bisector of the line segment ab. I'm not going to uh, draw that in the picture here because we've seen it before, and frankly, I only have space for the interesting case. Uh, and so the, the book actually makes the claim, well, you can consider this a degenerate circle, um, and then, then the theorem is totally broad. Uh, that may seem like kind of a dirty trick, um, just just redefining, say, oh, well, we'll consider this line to be a circle. But that's actually something that has precedent. It is done elsewhere uh, in other subjects, so it's not totally out of left field to consider a line uh, and a circle, or to consider a line to be a special case of a circle. Um, although I am guessing that may be the first time uh, you've experienced that sort of trickery. Okay, so now uh, let's talk about R not equal to one. Okay, now uh, when we discussed proving the converse of theorem 4.5, we noted that given a particular ratio r, in that case the ratio of the two sides of the given triangle, there is exactly there are exactly two points uh, such that the ratio of the distances from from these given points to those two points are the given ratio. And one of them is inside the segment. We're going to call that one C. And one of them is outside the segment. We're going to call that D. Okay? So given the ratio R, uh, you just do a little bit of algebra and you can find uh, the point inside C and the point outside D. Okay, so now you're going to suppose you have some point P that is not on this line but somehow still satisfies this ratio of condition. So we're going to say that AP over PB equals R. Okay? So you got some point here, P, and the ratio of PA to PB is equal to R. Okay, uh, now by the converse of theorem 4.5, um, this segment, PC, given that uh, the ratio of AC to CB is now equal to the ratio of AP, to PB, well that must mean that this line here is the interior bisector of the angle P, and that must mean that this line out here, well that's got to be the exterior bisector. Okay? So, uh, What we end up seeing then is that these lines, PC and CD, well, they're orthogonal to one another. 
which means that if you look at the circle that contains C and D, well, this point P has to be on that circle. And now, since this is true for any point P that satisfies this ratio that's not on this line AB, that shows us then that all those points that satisfy that ratio must be on a circle. And it must be on the circle that has CD as the diameter. This must be our circle. Okay? And we win. Uh, just as a quick aside, um, you, you, may have, you may have learned this result about the right triangle as, uh, you know, you're given a circle and you're given a diameter here and if you connect any point on the circle to the endpoints of the diameter you must have a right angle we just invoked the uh, the converse of that that says if you have um, if you have a point that when you draw the lines to the two uh, two endpoints then sorry that when you draw when you have a point P, such that when you draw the segments to C and D, and those segments are at right angles to one another, that means that that point is on the circle that contains that CD as the diameter. Okay? So I, I think you've seen that before. Uh, if not, please let me know, and I will, I will happily look up a reference for you. Uh, I hope that uh, this proof has made it clearer how theorem 4.7 fits along, the, along uh, with this section, uh, namely um, theorem 4.7 is the culmination of really an intensive study of uh, the angle bisectors, the internal bisectors and the external bisectors. And uh, we, we actually had a, a, I had a good time building up all these smaller results so that we get to something relatively big. I mean, big enough that it has a name associated with it, the Circle of Apollonius. Um, while it may not be the, the most relevant theorem you learn in this textbook, it's always nice when you know how to prove a named theorem.